You're welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Right now, uh, we're going to be talking about the extrajudicial killings in Anambra State. A group has demanded the release of the panel report on the extrajudicial killings in that state. And we have Comrade Mark Adebayo, the national spokesperson, Coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP. Uh, you're welcome to the program, Comrade. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and good morning, viewers. Okay, give us a background to these uh, uh, extrajudicial killing that we're talking about here in a number of states. Uh, well, um, it, it's quite uh, unfortunate because, um, especially the activities, the terrorism being unleashed by the so called unknown government, in the, the whole of Southeast, it's not, it, it's not just a number, the whole of the Southeast, you know. Um, it, it's, uh, it's terrible, and it, but it doesn't also give the security agencies the leverage to extrajudicially murder people. It, you can, because people need to go through certain process. Except you find people in active, in active armed engagement that that you can engage them and shoot them. At. But it's really whereby you have arrested people. Anybody arrested this, uh, this reserve the right of prosecution. I have some rights to a, a lawyer, a legal, uh, a legal exist to be able to, to, to pass through the normal legal processes of litigation and uh, prosecution so that you can prove every, every criminal, every uh, suspect is presumed innocent or to prove otherwise. That, that's the same thing that is happening. Look at uh, last week. A, a, a little girl, one Miss uh, Yahaya, was just shot dead by political talks in, uh, in Kogi State. So I'm wondering, if, look, at, if it is not taking Kogi State, may, may not even witness a, a, a peaceful election. And I don't know why the governor is being so politically correct that he is he, he, thinking that I shouldn't arrest opponents, arrest of that. Look, anybody that wants to, you know, disturb the peace of a state must be arrested. They don't have, Im they don't have immunity. They don't have constitutional immunity. You know. Uh, look at the, the way the some of the candidates in Kogi State and some other states have been going about their campaigning, especially the SDP candidate in the, in, in Kogi State. By now, I believe that the police should have arrested that man. You know, I believe he should have been arrested. Yes, as people of the opposition. But the issue is that I hate a situation whereby an innocent girl or innocent people will be shot dead, and we, we, because you are being politically correct, and then. Everybody is looking at, at, the, at, at the person who encourages, promotes uh, insecurity. So in the Southeast, I, I, I am baffled that, okay, you claim you are fighting for your people. Uh, maybe you are demanding for your own separate state of Biafra or something like that. But the same people you claim you are liberating, you are killing, you are shooting, you are raping, you are, you are abducting. The governors in the Southeast are not doing well. They, 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 they are not doing well. They, they, they need to they need to wrap up their security network. It is not something that Imo State will be doing his own. Uh, Anambra will be doing his own. Uh, boy, look at what happened in the boy two two or three days ago. We have we have properties were destroyed. People were shot. People were macheted because people are they claim to be fighting. I'm a student of rev revolutionary history. You do not kill or attack the people you want to liberate. That's why when I was reading and watching the reports on Kogi State, how can somebody who claims that I want to go fight a state, you are not promoting security, you are promoting violence, you are promoting ethnic divisionism and revisionism in the state? And then the government is watching, is is like afraid that uh, you no, know, if I arrest, if I arrest this person now, they will say I am being, I am maybe is commission of police came out. To say to, to begin to complain, you see, we as leaders and as governors, as security leaders, you don't wait on things until things this, uh, get to a level that is uncontrollable before you take action. Take action against people that you know are breaking and breaching the security and peace of your state. And the governors in the southeast are, are not doing enough. They're not doing enough. They're not being proactive. These guys are not coming. Are not coming from the cloud. Now you now go. And execute people anyhow, just because you are angry. Uh, once we have, you know, look, as an activist, I know that it is very wrong for you to extrajudicially terminate people. They need to go through the legal 
and constitutional processes of litigation and being presented in court, in a court of competent jurisdiction to be prosecuted and if found guilty, you know, let them face the full lot of the law. There is no, in our constitution and our laws, there is no space, there is no place, there is no point for extrajudicial murders. No, no way. Okay. Um, we're being joined also by uh, Mr. Biodun Shomi, a public affairs analyst. Uh, good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Shomi. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's unfortunate that we are at this point where we'll be talking about groups urging the government or urging the uh, relevant bodies to release a report that, we, that, that had findings to the extrajudicial killings in Anambra State, and not just Anambra State, anywhere else that that report, uh, a report like that has been done that has not been released. Uh, so I just don't understand what is happening. If you have insight to why the police will not release the report of uh, uh, these extrajudicial killings that was set, the committee was set up in February by the erstwhile um, Inspector General of Police. And from February till now, we have not heard that. Uh, do you have any insight in, as to why this report has not been released and so far, how far? Well, um, we, the, it's quite bad that we found ourselves in a situation where those who are supposed to protect the lives of the public why are actually alleged to have been involved in the killings in Anambra State, the organ harvesting killings, start judicial killings and all that. Uh, we should not forget the fact that the whistleblower actually fled for his life and we, he was brought back by the Nigerian security services, um, kept in protective custody, um, interviewed in relation to it, later charged uh, for one offense or the other of impersonation of a police officer, whether correct or not. But at the end of the day, what has happened so far is that the wheel of investigation is so slow to the extent that it's now leading to um, speculations on the part of um, the public and leading to demand being made by civil society organizations, um, which already is creating, you know, a kind of... Um, painting a kind of scenario that the police are trying to hide one thing or the other or the uh, given or alleged depth of their involvement um, in what has happened in Anambra State. I am not saying those suspicions are right, but what, what I'm saying is that uh, the wheel of investigation is so slow. Um, according to the police, they released the initial, um, they forwarded the initial um, re preliminary investigation report to the IGP. If that is correct, the IGP may have given further instructions on loose ends that should be investigated. And should that be the case, we expect, or the public expect, that that should be done speedily rather than, you know, delaying the whole process. And uh, it's time the IGP himself, who we have no reason to doubt his uh, um, impeccability or his... Uh, uh, it's an um, honesty in this matter to actually weigh in and ensure that it could speed up the wheel of investigation. Uh, yes, I agree there must be diligent investigation. Otherwise, if you do a short investigation, it will end up failing in the court of law. We will not be able to ensure that the appropriate people are convicted. So, mm -hmm. but notwithstanding that, that alone will not suffice to, to, to explain uh, the, the, the slow nature of this. this. This has been going on for over eight months, almost nine months. And for me, so many lives were lost. And organ harvesting is horrendous crime. They start judicial killings, horrendous crime. There were even allegations that people were being killed with a view to take over their property. So all this needs to be unraveled. And the ball is in the IGP's court. Uh, but um, would you say that is because, let me remember with you, Mr. Shawami, would you say that is because it is allegation against the police. Uh, that's why the wheel of uh, uh, investigation, as you put it, is so slow. Well, it's an allegation involving not only the police, but also civilians, um, notable civilians in Anambra State. Um, my point is that it's slow. It could be due to culpability of the police, um, some senior police officers in, 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 in Anambra State, or it could also be slow due to the fact that uh, the police force is highly overwhelmed. Don't forget all this happened around the election, uh, electioneering period, where so many police officers were taking off their beats, you know, to provide protection either for 
election or for uh, contestants. But uh, since then, we have finished elections. Uh, by May 29, the new president has been sworn in. So one would have expected that more attention would have been paid to this. So why this is lower than necessary is inexplicable to me. But I know the claim they have submitted the initial report. So why is the initial report, if not released, submitted to IG, if he has given further directions on the matter, by now this issue should have been concluded. So uh, it's leading to his breathing suspicion, uh, which is not good for the police. Uh, the fact that he's been delayed for that. So the right thing is for the IGP, you know, to take this matter seriously and then look into it, ensure there is diligent investigation which should lead to prosecution of indicted police officers and culpable civilians. Okay, um, uh, let me come to you, comrade. Uh, Mr. Shomi just said something about the fact that uh, it's not only about the police, but also notable uh, civilians. And when you say notable civilians, our minds go to political, uh, politically aware people, people who are high up there and uh, who should be our leaders. Now, you are a national spokesperson, Coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP. And I'm wondering, this violence has, in, in most case, cases, been attributed to the workings or the doings of the political uh, persons uh, within communities. What are you doing as a, a coalition of these political parties? What are you doing to make sure that violence is in politics is either reduced or abolished. Do you do anything deliberately to, towards that end? Well, the duty and assignment of, a, of an opposition is to hold those who are in political offices accountable and responsible for whatever happens in their, in their states, in their domain. We have been doing that. We have, been, we have even made interventions in terms of written um, recommendations that this is what's supposed to be done. As a matter of fact, the opposition, like for instance, my colleague, Ikenga Imo Ugoshiri, was a, was a victim of the, this same uh, political violence in Imo State. In the, they are not allowed to look at, uh, look at government of uh, Imo State. He, he, his house was, was attacked. His people were killed. Let, let, me, get this, let me get this right. So, let me get this right, yeah. please, comrade. Um, you, hold your uh, train of thoughts. You said opposition. And when we see... Yeah. Um, coalition of united political parties they what comes to mind is all political parties shed whatever uh, divergent views they have they come together and see how politics can uh, go to greater heights and all that but you're you're repeatedly using the word opposition so this coalition is only for opposition is that what you're saying yeah yeah, yeah exactly i mean principally and primarily cbp is uh, is an opposition uh you know, amalgam of uh, political parties, definitely. Opposition but, to mm, what? Mm, mm. Because in some cases, there are PDP uh, governors. In some cases, there are uh, LP governors and all that. So how do you function in states where you have different uh, political parties at the helm of affairs? <laughs> that was a very damning question. It, it is that, you know, when you have a government, a, a party in power at the center, which is currently in the APC, now you are having... Uh, you know, the, the amalgam of other political parties who are in the opposition. But generally, what we do is to hold the government accountable and also to prefer solutions. For instance, the, the, like, you know, I mentioned in my introductory that the uh, uh, issue of Kogi State, where I we know that the governor has done a lot in terms of security and the rest of that, but that currently the things that are going down there is not being proactive, it's been try, it's trying to be politically, you know, correct and not you know, putting people that are supposed, he, he supposed by now he and the police are supposed to have put some people in custody to, to stem the tide of violence in, the, in that place. But having said that, the, the important thing concerning the Anambra and the, uh, generally the country is that you cannot expect the police to, to investigate the police. If you, you cannot expect the police to prosecute the police. You cannot expect the police to monitor the police. You don't expect the police to condemn the police. So the, the issue of judicial killings in Anambra and any other state of Nigeria, 
needs to be investigated, interrogated, and handled by a different agency, possibly the uh, Directorate of uh, State Services, DSS. We, you, we need an independent agency to investigate the police. You cannot expect the police to uh, to investigate the police and come out with the report, the kind of report that we are, we are, will be expecting. If the police engage in uh, extrajudicial killing, allegedly, now, you now expect the police to now investigate itself and uh, sort of uh, implicate itself. No, it will be slow or it may, not, it may never be done. We have had several cases since 1960s, 70s, 80s, till now, you know. Look at the Daudu brothers that were murdered, broad daylight, I think 1982, in Lagos. Nothing came out of it. You cannot expect the police to, expect, to investigate their own crimes. It's an anom it's, it is anomalous. It, it's not going to work. So we need to have an independent body that will investigate. Uh, this is the time that I expect the National Human Rights Commission to come on board and handle these cases. Anything that involves the police and not be investigated by the police and you expect a good result. I want to appreciate the college GP and the police authorities generally for what they are doing recently. You know, the guy who was beating somebody, who was slapping somebody, I think it was in Potter Court, has been dismissed from the... I think, okay, I think he's, uh, he's, he was, he was, he was uh, deranged from inspector to a mere sergeant. Well, good enough uh, punishment, but, you know, when you dismiss police officers for misconduct from the force, you also need to, I think you need to monitor the activities. These are people who already understand how to handle weapons, arms, and the rest of that, and they already understand the security architecture of the country. When you dismiss them or you punish them, you need to monitor them adequately. I will, I will recommend sincerely that if you are dismissing, especially are dismissing a policeman or a police officer from the force for misconduct, you need to put him or her in custody for at least one year so that you monitor, you kind of, in a way, you know, you, 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 try, you, you try to monitor him or her to ensure that you're not going to, to the royal society and then continue to commit crime. It's very, very important. But the most important thing here is that you cannot expect police to investigate itself. We need an, a, an independent body to investigate the police. Okay. We cannot expect the army to investigate itself. We need an imp independent, uh, independent body to do that. For as long as you are having the police, you are leaving it, the initiative to the police to investigate itself. We are not likely to be getting the justice, the justice that we, we, we want to get in, in, in this matter. And when you engage in a judicial, judicial killings, what you have done is that you have committed crimes against humanity. You have committed a crime against humanity. So the police authorities need to, you know, to up their game in this matter. And then, uh, especially in this matter okay. of the Anambra State, where some politically exposed persons uh, were allegedly to be involved. As after rule, people have to be arrested or invited, investigated, and if found culpable, taken to court and properly prosecuted. Okay. So uh, this is taking, it's, it's taking too, too long. Okay. Uh, as we wrap up, uh, Mr. Shoumi, um, the, the case is becoming more and more worrisome, a case of violence in our elections. I know that we've experienced it, uh, election violence over the years, but now it's scary, maybe because we have the social media and uh, information is very, very um, easy to get these days than before now. So what do you think can be done to, to remove... Um, violence from our electoral process, if you, if you may. Because if there's violence and politicians are involved, that means civilians are involved. So what do you think can be done to sanitize our political space and remove the kind of violence that we see these days uh, from our political space? Honestly speaking, um, it's um, part and parcel of a presidential system. And I will give you a good example. The last election in the United States of America was also redoled with violence um, uh, in some states in America. And not only that, we even saw what happened at the U.S. Congress time when people tried to overturn the results of the election. Uh, uh, violent, you know, invaded the Congress. That has never happened, even in Nigeria. So that would tell you that um, the nature of presidential system, which is winner takes all, 
makes it highly competitive and very, very antagonistic. You know, uh, po uh, po po politicians are antagonistic to each other because if you lose out in the power game, there is no way how you can accomplish your own manifesto or your program. Now, to answer your question directly, I still think that we need to move away, you know, from presidential system of government. Apart from the fact that it's this very, very expensive and it drains resources that need, are needed for development. We need to move towards parliamentary system of government, where if you score 40% in an election, you will have 40% representation in the parliament. A party that scores 10% will have 10% representation. It won't be a winner takes all. And in many cases, except you are extremely popular, that you have over 50%, that is when you are able to dictate the terms. Otherwise, you have to go, you know, form um, an alliance with another political party in order to form government. It means more people' expectations and um, their belief will be better represented in government. Currently, under the presidential system of government, it is only the, uh, the, the perception of APC and their manifesto that will be implemented. Then you now ask yourself, APC with 35%, what happens to the rest terms, uh, 65%? Uh, whose voices uh, will get drowned uh, simply because um, uh, they are not represented in the parliament. So we need to move away from presidential system of government, move to parliamentary system of government, where what matters is winning your constituency and not winning the election nationally. That, in my view, will help to reduce the nature of viol the level of violence which we are witnessing currently. Okay, may we all survive it and see better days for Nigeria. Uh, we'd, I'd like to thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the show this morning uh, to uh, also talk about, lend your voice to the fact that uh, we do not need all these extrajudicial killings and whoever is culpable should be prosecuted so that we begin to see action. I'd like to thank you, Comrade Mark Adebayo, National Spokesperson, Coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP. Thank you for coming on the program. Thank you so much for having me. And also, Mr. Biodun Shomi, a political affairs analyst, thank you so much for being a part of our program this morning. Thank you for having me. Okay. Well, um, that's how we wrap it up on today's show. Uh, we do hope that you had a wonderful time being with us. We'll do it again tomorrow. And for now, on behalf of the entire uh, family of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, I say thank you for being there. Up next is the news. My name is Nyam Gul Agaji.